Hey folks, this is Dr. Wu here, and we are going to do a quick video on motion graphs. First, let me address the riddle from last week. The riddle was if I'm run, running around a track and my initial velocity the first time around is V1. How fast do I need to go the second time so that my average velocity is twice V1? And the answer is, uh, it is impossible. There's no speed that I can go the second time around so that my average velocity is twice my original velocity. Let me give you an example. Let's say the track is 100 meters. And let's say you go around that in 50 seconds. And so my initial velocity is 2 meters per second. Let's say that uh, for average velocity, that's total distance. So x1 plus x2 over total time t1 plus t2. Now we know the total distance is going to be 200 for two times around. I know my t is going to be two seconds, two, or I'm sorry, 50 for my first one plus T2 for my second one. And I want this to be two times V1. Well, V1 is two meters per second. So I want this to equal four meters per second. Well, for this to equal four meters per second, what does the bottom need to be? Well, the top is going to be 200. The bottom, therefore, if I want this to equal 4, is going to have to equal 50 two, because 200 divided by 50 is 4. Well, I already have 50 there. So there's no time that I can, no matter how short, the time has to be 0 for my second time around in order for my velocity be, to be, t my average velocity to be twice my initial velocity. And that's impossible. I can't just go around in zero, I can't go 100 meters in zero seconds. Now, there is one way that it's kind of possible. As I suppose that if you went around the first time, or if you just stood in one spot and counted that as one go around and your, v, your initial velocity was zero, then uh, all you have to do is stay put the second time around, and then your average velocity is still going to be zero. So that's still twice your initial velocity because zero times two equals, equals zero. But that doesn't really quite count as a solution because I said you already went around the first time. Today you're, we're learning about motion graphs. And now that we've been learning about velocity, it, we're going to learn about all about how to graph velocity. And this is really important because it's important to know how to read data and graphs. Well, we're, let's talk about a few different cases to start out. <clears throat> First, let me show you what a motion graph looks like. On the y-axis, we're going to have, sometimes it's called distance, sometimes it's called position. Again, we're going to use those fairly interchangeably in this class. So on the y-axis is my distance, or also known as position, and the x-axis is usually going to be time. We start at distance 0, and I might have 5, 10, 15, and this could be meters, this could be yards, feet, it doesn't matter. And I might have my time in seconds. So this is one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. Now, let's talk about how we would graph different objects. The first one I wanna talk about is what's known as a stationary object. And so if, I, if my object starts at zero, also known as the origin, we would draw a dot here for time zero. If the object does not move at time one, it's still at the origin, still at zero. Time two, it's still at zero. Time three, still at zero. So in this case, 
We have our object stay put the whole time. That's a stationary object. It's also a stationary object if the object didn't start at the origin, but started at a distance of 10 meters. By the way, let me show you what this looks like. Let's say I'm here, and we're going to call this the origin. And 5 meters away would be right here, and then 10 meters away would be right here. 10 meters away from my starting position. That's what I mean. So let's say my guy started at 10 meters. Well, if he doesn't move at time one, he's still at 10 meters. At time two, which is two seconds, he's still at 10 meters if he doesn't move. So these straight horizontal lines all represent stationary objects. What if an object is moving though? Let's say an object starts at zero and then moves in a consistent velocity further and further away. Well, when it's a consistent velocity, we call this uniform motion. And let's say they start at zero, and let's say at time one, he's five meters away. And at time two, let me just clear this, he's 10 meters away, or she, could be a girl. Let me just or time three, she's at 15 meters. Well, this girl is traveling the same speed the whole time. That's why we call this uniform motion. She's traveling the same speed. And it's a straight line. Also notice that, just as a quick aside, we can calculate the velocity of this girl. Because remember, velocity is change in distance over change in time. That happens to be my slope of this line. And so my slope here is for every five meters I travel, that's one second. And so my velocity is five meters per second. We're not going to do too much, too many calculations like this of calculating slope and velocity. I'm just telling you that the velocity is equal to the slope of this line. And that's kind of good to know. Because what that means is the steeper the slope, the faster the velocity. Notice that in this graph, at one second, this particular person has already traveled 10 meters. At two seconds, 15 meters. So this person is traveling faster. What happens if an object is not traveling a consistent speed and is actually speeding up, or what we call acceleration? Well, let's draw what that would look like. What that would mean, and by the way, I'm going to label this as accelerating motion. Well, let's say the first second, she's going 5 meters per second, so she goes 5 meters. But then over the next second, she speeds up. And all of a sudden, she's going 10 meters per second. So from time 1 to 2, she goes from 5 to 15 meters. She's speeding up. Let's say she's continuing to speed up even further, and so her line starts to become steeper and steeper. We see that the slope of the line is increasing. Over here, it's very steep. Over here, it's not so steep. So this object is going faster and faster, and is accelerating. Let's practice now by looking at a couple of different graphs and trying to interpret them because that's mainly what we want to be able to do is interpret. How would you describe this motion below? Well, this person is starting at the origin, going at a consistent speed from all the way from position zero to position five. 
meters. It takes them five seconds and they go one speed. But after that, what do you think is happening from here to here? Well, the person is at five meters and is staying there the whole time from time five to time 10 seconds. So here it's uniform, but when they get here, the person stops and is now stationary. What does it mean when the, uh, when the line is now going downward? Where is this person going? Well, this person is going from position five back down to position zero, so they're going backwards. Not only that, the line, the slope of it is steeper, so they're actually going faster than they were going before. Maybe they were taking a leisurely stroll out, sat at a park bench, then realized they had to get home and ran home really quickly. Let's take a look at another example. How would you describe this motion below? Well, the way that I would describe this motion is that they start at five meters. So they don't start at zero meters, they start at five meters, and that's okay. They are not moving from here to here because they stand, they're staying at the five meter position. Then they go back towards the origin, back towards position zero, end up at position zero, and then stay there. All right. Let me ask you, what would it look like if the person went back even faster than this person? What would the line look like if they went back to the origin even faster? Well, the line would be steeper. They would get back faster in a shorter amount of time, and it might look like that. All right, a car is moving forward and applying the brake. Which position time graph best depicts this motion? Go ahead and take a look. And let me give you some hints. So the car is going to be moving and they're moving forward. So let's say they go from zero and they're going from five, they're going this way. And they apply the brake. So at the beginning, their velocity is higher, higher velocity, and at the end, it's a lower velocity. Which one would this be? If they apply the brake, maybe by the end, they're completely stopped, and they just stop wherever they end up. Which one would that be? Well, that would be D. Here, my slope is higher, then my slope starts to gradually uh, become more shallow, and then eventually the line becomes flat, meaning they're a stationary object at this point. They're staying at this position. This is one where a car is moving forward, slowing down, and then ends up being a stationary object. Okay, before we end, let me just ask, you know, one or two more questions here. What do you think A, B, and C could represent? Let's focus on, uh, actually, I'm probably just going to ask questions in the video about this. So go ahead and take a look. That's pretty much it.